Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. Today we're going to talk about Glock handguns and I have a love-hate relationship with Glocks. I, I love them in certain ways and in other ways I hate them and I want to express to you what I'm talking about and give you some examples and we'll see if you agree. Let's start with one of the things I love. Aftermarket support with Glock handguns are unmatched. Glock has more aftermarket support. Some of the companies are out there that offer that are flourishing with aftermarket support. Everything from the magazine release to the extended slide stop to various slides that you could put on there, framework done, you name it. Glock has aftermarket support. Sights, these are aftermarket night sights on this Glock 19. The original sights are pretty garbage in my opinion. It, it's plastic, it's field goal. You know, a lot of people keep those on there, but it's not, not my personal favorite. The sights typically are changed out by Glock owners. There's so much that you could do with your Glock, and people do, to fit their own personal shooting style and their personality, but that comes at a cost. People spend three, four, five hundred dollars accessorizing up their Glocks, and you consider this Glock 19 is right around 540 bucks. You add two or three, four hundred dollars onto that, it gets up into the four figure mark. So the aftermarket support is great, but yet it comes at a cost. Now we look at something like this. This is an LTD 19 made by Lone Wolf Arms. All right, they use their own frame. They have the slide work already done on there. Some lightning cuts, some unique work there. They have the extended slide stop extended magazine release. They, they kept the same trigger. I'm not too crazy about that. But overall, I think they did a great job. Here's another example. The 80% Arms GST-9. They have all this, okay? And this one here is optic ready. Now, it's not that much more to purchase this or the Low Wolf model than accessorizing up a Glock. So you have to decide, you know, what direction you want to go. In my opinion, it's just easier and quicker to do it this way and, and save a few bucks in the process. The next thing I want to talk about is the Glock trigger. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Many people switch them out. I think they're okay. Glock says it's a five and a half pound trigger pull. And the one thing I, I give them respect for is that they use the same trigger on all of their models. If you pull this Glock trigger on the Glock 26, I get the same exact feeling with the Glock 19 and the Glock 43X. So I like it that they keep it across their entire line. And you know, a lot of people switch them out for a reason. Now Glock says five and a half pounds. Sometimes I measure six, six and a quarter. Other times I measure five and a half. So it's not five and a half pounds across the board, but they are consistent in terms of the way they feel. Some people say it feels like they are squeezing a staple gun. And, and I get that. I get that because when you pull this trigger, it, it feels fine, but it does not feel fine when you compare it to something like this, a Walther PDP. All right, I pull this trigger and it is so smooth. It is so smooth. Same thing with the HK VP9. I pull this trigger. It is so smooth. I don't know why Glock hasn't improved their own trigger throughout the years. I, I, I don't get that. Why, why haven't they made some steps to improve that? Or are they getting a piece of the aftermarket support and all the triggers that are out there? I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but it, it's my opinion that there are so many companies that have phenomenal triggers. I think Glock is, is fine, but it's not great. And for that, I, I disrespect Glock and their trigger and their unwillingness to change from the ordinary Glock that we are used to. Looking at the ergonomics of a Glock, there's a reason why people call them block. The grip is very thick. When you hold on to this, it feels like a block, like a, like a wood block after a while, especially shooting a lot of rounds at the range. That, that takes its toll on your hand after a while. Glock has not really done much to change the the grip the way it feels now it carries 15 rounds over here i've got the sig p320 this carries 15 rounds too and yet it feels great on the hand when gripping i could shoot this all day long and not have any issues both 15 round mags but if you look at the the 
thickness of it, you can see that the SIG is much thinner than the Glock. And unless you have monster size hands, which I consider mine average, some people say they're large, the, the SIG's just going to feel so much better than the Glock. And, and if we look at even a budget gun, here's a SAR-9. All right, $250, $300 gun. It holds 17 rounds right now, and yet it feels great on the hand, okay? I can go on. You know, the Walther PDP that I just had out, the, the HK the VP9, they have ergos that are so much better, but also the grip angle. Let's bring back the P320X Compact. Look at the difference with the grip angle. Much more vertical here. It makes a more normal sight line when you align those sights and, and shoot it to range it, it to me it just feels more natural with this type of grip angle and that's why when lone wolf came out with the ltd 19 they used their timber wolf frame which has a more vertical grip angle and that is because so many people complain about the grip angle with a glock it's too slanted and when you, you have that you have to adjust the sight picture here you pull it up put it on your dominant I in you pull the trigger it's just an easier grip or I'm sorry an easier sight picture for me when the grip angle is a little more vertical and that's one of the things once again Glock never changed that they, they've had that from the beginning and they, they kept it the same and so what what happens people end up changing the ergos they end up doing stipple jobs they end up undercutting the trigger guard they do all these things that other manufacturers are doing right out of the case of their handguns. One of the things I love about Glock is that their double stack mags in the same caliber chambering uses the larger mags. And this is a 33 round mag. It's a Glock mag. I don't like the Korean ones or many of the other mags that are 30, 30 plus capacity that are not Glock. And they are extremely reliable. And many of the other manufacturers use Glock mags. And for good reason. Glock mags are great. And I think having 33 rounds is great. But by contrast, they are late to the party in so many other areas. Here's an example. The Glock 43X. When this came out, people were mostly satisfied with their carry gun. You know, when, when SIG came out with the P365, you know, they, they put 10 rounds, in this case 12 rounds, in a mag. And they created a subcompact gun that a lot of people loved. And since then, so many others have come out with their models. Glock was late to the party. They were late with the small 380, the Glock 42. They were late with the Glock 43, the single stack. And so we, we see that, you know, people say everybody's copying Glock, but yet kind of seeing it the opposite way. If we look at a Springfield XDM, this is uh, XDM Elite, this is the 4.5 inch barrel model now a better comparison will be the glock 17 i don't have that but nonetheless this has additional back straps glock was late coming out with additional back straps this has a fiber optic front sight u rear sight made of steel steel guide rod a pick rail a flat trigger ambidextrous controls and we're starting to see that on some of the Glock models, but not across the board. The, the Glock 19 is, you know, it is what you get what you get. And that's that. <laughs> With these other models, they come out of the case. Here, look at this. 20 round mags. All right. Flared mag well. Like I could go on. All the features that this has. Loaded chamber indicator bar. A uh, cock striker indicator right there. These other manufacturers are coming out with more and more features, including magazines. Springfield now makes a 35 round magazine for this. So Glock did lead the way in many cases. And for that, I love them because they once had innovation, but they let that slide. They were kind of holding on to their models and they sell. They do sell, but it would be nice to see them come out something that is feature loaded like this. And then perhaps many people's decisions or thoughts on Glock would change to the better. One of the things I love about Glock is the reliability. The reliability is there and people are confident carrying it. They're com confident in combat situations, you know, law enforcement, military. They use Glock, not across the board, but they feel confident with Glock. It has endured many reliability tests and People say, hey, I want something that's going to work every time, and I can find that in a Glock. And I appreciate that, and I love that about Glock. But I'm also seeing that it's extremely expensive. When you consider 
$540 or $50 for this and then other things you want to add to it, it just seems out of the price range of a lot of people out there. Let's take a look at the PSA Dagger. I'm not saying this is a better gun, but it's 300 bucks. You know, it has the forward serrations. It, it has it undercutting the trigger guard. It uses the Glock mag. It has three dot sights. You know, it has things that shooters want that won't cost them as much. Look at this. Stoger STR9C, it has the forward serrations. Glock doesn't have that. It, it does on the 43X, and they're starting to come out with models with forward serrations. But by and large, it, it's an add-on. Additional slide work, a pick rail there, you know, steel sights, steel guide rod. We look at the Taurus models, very popular, mid-300s right here. You know, uh, 12 round mags here, but a four inch barrel. This is the G3 XL, all right? It has many features that people want out of their handguns without having to break the bank. And, and if you buy a stock Glock and you don't change out certain things, it, it's just not where a lot of these guns are coming out of the case, coming right from the factory. So you pay for it. There's no doubt you pay for it. I think the dagger opened a lot of people's eyes. They said, how can Palmetto State Armory sell this for 300 bucks, yet Glock is selling this for 540, 550, somewhere in that range. So it makes you wonder why they are so expensive. Yes, they are reliable. And, and I agree that you cannot put a price on your life, but they certainly cost a lot. And I think the reliability factor has been caught up with so many of the modern handguns. There's a plethora of firearms to choose from these days, and you're not stuck with one manufacturer in particular. And I think Glock needs to up their game a little bit if they want to compete with some of these other models that are out there. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.